artists have to be adaptable, you know, we have to be able to hang out with like the most wealthiest people and also like hang out with like the middle class and then like also be able to communicate with like the lowest class of people. I think artists should be able to communicate their ideas or just be able to listen to a variety of different people. If they can't do that, then I think those artists are really going down a narrow path of communication to their audience. You know, not everybody's going to get it. And I think sometimes when you look at contemporary art, it doesn't feel like it's for everyone. And I think those are challenges and obstacles and barriers that need to be confronted, communicated, and eventually dissolved because art is for everybody. When I arrive in the studio, I open up all the windows and I try to take a minute and see what I was working on before, last time I was here. Clean up a little bit, you know, push everything to the side, give myself room. I turn on my Bluetooth player and I play my favorite playlist, start working on painting that I use either a work in progress or I try to find something new to start on. So most of my paintings are acrylic, oil stick. Sometimes I use spray paint. I like using oil stick because it has a sense of immediacy. Uh, acrylic dries quickly and it allows me to layer. Most of the time I, I like to use oil stick and acrylic and acrylic caulk to create a lot of texture. I like the paintings to have a sense of impasto so that it has that, the texture that creates like a vibrancy or a sense of movement. Most of my paintings are, are based on either, are inspired by science fiction, new age philosophies, my ancestry, you know, like being Ecuadorian and Mexican, a lot of my work is focused on that. I try to look at ancient artworks from like Mesoamerica, Mexico, and South America, and kind of recontextualize it in a way that it can be reintroduced into the contemporary world, in the contemporary art world. It doesn't really feel like Latin art is really represented in a lot of contemporary art. I grew up here in Chicago. I'm from Chicago. I was born in 1989, uh, November 2nd. I came to a point realizing that art was a way to find solace with the traumas that I experienced as a child. I think when I was younger, I was always gravitated towards drawing because it's something you can do when you're by yourself. You don't need a lot of stuff to do it. And I got in trouble a lot in school, so I was always grounded and I would always just find myself drawing. Drawing and reading were like the two things I would do all the time. But as I got older, I just realized that, you know, when I'm painting sometimes or drawing with my oil sticks or just like giant crayons, I have this flashback to just being a kid. I think the narrative that I'm trying to communicate is this um, this idea of accessing another realm, whether it be internal or external. I do that through meditation, through accessing like altered states of consciousness. But for the most part, I think I would like people to see the story about how they could make themselves better and like accessing the, the divine self, which is just like the basic self, when you eliminate all the layers of the ego. My practice has just been a long journey of me accessing that realm for myself and trying to find that balance of presenting my highest self on canvas and maybe hoping that people can find something along the lines that they can relate to. I knew that I liked making art because I was already making a ton of art. I just didn't know that that was what artists did. I was just super creative and it was just pouring out of me. I didn't know you could make a career out of that. I didn't know you could make money off of that. But before that, I mean, I would say I was a creative child. I drew a lot. I colored a lot. I was always in isolation as in a room, which is what, you know, an artist does. You're in your studio by yourself contemplating. Okay, that was awesome.